uh, annual rates. And I'll ask uh, Councillor Tim Skinner to begin us with a Karakia Reprieve. Thank you. Can I please ask all to stand? Thank you. <laughs> Almighty God, we give thanks for blessings which have been bestowed on New Zealand, laying aside all personal interests. We pray for guidance in our deliberations that we may conduct the affairs of this committee meeting with wisdom and humility for the public welfare and peace of our Nelson community through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 So much like the parliamentary prayer, I'm going to be very careful not to fall back into parliamentary routines this morning. Thank you, Tim. Uh, can I just firstly acknowledge council colleagues with me being off on COVID for a week, uh, of particularly the Deputy Mayor, but also others uh, carrying community responsibilities for me during the course of that uh, last week. Uh, we come to apologies. Uh, good to have a full attendance uh, of uh, council. Uh, there are no apologies. Uh, we come to confirmation of the order of business. It's my intention to proceed with the business as set out in the agenda. Are there any updates to the interests um, register uh, that every person wants to declare with respect to this morning's agenda? There are none. There is no public forum. We come to item five, and that's the adoption of the schedule of fees and charges uh, for 23-24, and invite of officers before the committee, please, before council. Just before I ask you to proceed, can I just get a guidance from uh, councillors? Um, staff have obviously been working on putting the final I's dotted T's crossed on the actual annual plan document. Uh, there has been some criticism from councillors that we print too much paper, and one view could be that you'd prefer not to have a paper copy and just quite happy to have electronic. The alternative view uh, is that it's such an important document that we're always referring to during the course of the year that actually this is one of those that actually anybody having a paper copy is worthwhile. Um, I'm happy to take guidance. Council staff have got printed versions that are also available for the public. Would you like the final version of the annual plan distributed in paper form this morning or not? Uh, the signals I'm getting is, with this being such an important document, it is worth having the final paper copy. So I'll ask staff to distribute each council as a, a full copy of the final annual plan that we are set to adopt this morning. When we get later on into the process, we'll get a little bit more clarity. There have been a few tweaks of uh, issues to just get the clarity, and we'll be making those plain of that part of the process. Thank you for doing that. Over to you. Uh, kia ora. Uh, so through the chair, uh, taking the report adoption of schedule of fees and charges 23-24 as read, um, the only thing I would like to note is that you'll see that there are some fees and charges that are only going up by 7.2% or less, which is usually under the chief executive's delegation uh, to approve. Uh, however, some fees do require consultation under other legislation, um, such as the Resource Management Act. Uh, or there are some um, options that were included in the statement of proposal that went out for consultation um, that included the full suite of charges um, for a particular area. Um, so staff thought it was cleaner to keep all those fees and charges together. So, for example, the Building um, Act. Wouldn't it be a beautiful thing if Parliament had the goodwill to align the provisions so that you didn't have to navigate this dog's breakfast of different provisions around what you can do. And it's not that I have a strong view about the many being one, but it does substantially add to the compliance costs when each different act has different procedures about the setting of these fees. And perhaps as we engage with government with some of the proposals around local government reform, uh, we could help them make our processes a bit more simpler in that area. But you've done a good job. I prefer the way you've done it because it's then quite transparent to the public. They can see it all in one place. And in my view, whether it is the council making the decision or the chief executive making the decision, they just want to know what the charges are and how much they've gone up. Now, these issues have been well discussed in response to public submissions. You'll notice under 5.11, uh, that we did make a tweak in response to the public submissions. Uh, we really are just in the position today of formalising the decisions that we've made previously. Uh, are there any questions for officers in respect of the schedule of fees and charges for 23-24? There are not. 
then uh, would somebody prepare to move the adoption of the schedule of fees and charges? Thank you, uh, Councillor Mel Courtney. Is there a seconder? Thank you, uh, Councillor Pete Rainey. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. That is carried. We now move to the next item, which is the adoption of the annual plan 23-24 and the setting uh, of the rates. Ask our officers team uh, before committee uh, to come to this item. Despite being involved in seven months of process, I still learned some things about the rating system uh, as a consequence of reading all the paperwork that has gone into uh, the setting of the rates uh, for 23-24. Welcome again to the team. Thank you for all your work over the last six months in getting to this point. Happy for you to present and then take questions. Thank you through the Mayor. Um, uh, through the Chair, I'll just uh, really say take the report is read. Uh, there's no substantive changes to um, the document is circulated and uh, any minor editorial changes we will take care of later. Uh, the one thing I will just remind is that we do need to um, take the first nine resolutions together or, or before we get into the setting of the rates because we have to adopt the funding impact statement as part of the annual plan before we set the rates. So if we can make sure that we take everything up to resolution nine first and then we can set the rates. Thank you. Thank you for your guidance on that. Would it be possible maybe, Lou, for the annual plan printed copy that's just been distributed it was noted to me that there are a couple of uh, tweaks or errors that were found from those that were previously circulated. Do you wish to update us on those just so we're absolutely clear as to the, if there's any significance to those? So through the chair, um, there's no material significant um, changes. Probably the key things that we're wanting to emphasise is the document that you're adopting today is the document within the agenda. So it is the word copy that you received in the agenda. The visuals that were provided is more for the look and feel as we've um, taken that through to the designer. Um, I probably can defer to Nikki if there's anything else. I mean, it's, the other changes really are very minor. I don't know that it's worth the committee's time or council's time to even look at them. It's sort of small, um, you know, typo corrections and well, there's one little $200,000 which um, is being fixed, but nothing at all significant has been found in the checking since but it's been circulated. When I looked through it, I thought it was very well presented and it is the most important document uh, for the financial year. So compliment the team on the work that they've been putting together both in the making a presentation and user-friendly, uh, and also doing those final checks on the numbers. Is there any questions that colleagues have of our staff? So the order of business will be to take questions to staff, then seek uh, a mover and seconder uh, for the adoption of the annual plan, and then move secondly to the discussion of rates. Councillor Brand. Uh, thank you, through the Mayor. Um, just a clarification question that I received from the public. So I'd just like the answer to be shared so they heard it straight from the horse's mouth as such. Um, with unexpected budget, unplanned budget expenses that come up through the year, what would that mean? Because we do have things that prop up from time to time that we haven't allowed for or thought of, and we have to respond within a timely manner. How does that impact on um, this year? Because I know that we tend to go to debt to fund the unexpected um, Unplanned expenditure. <laughs> Sorry, my words. I'm going to pass, pass that tricky parcel over to. <laughs> can I just just with the noise of the rain, uh, make sure that people um, come right up to the microphone, uh, just to make sure that they're heard. But a good question. Uh, over to you, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, the, 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 that is a good question. And so during the year, obviously we're setting a budget at a point in time, and and things do come up, and we and we want to be flexible and. Um, and, and respond to things that happen during the year. So quite often where we um, have under, unbudgeted expenditure, we'll bring that to council. Our very first option is to look for offsets of savings, um, of using other budgets first. Uh, but if we do need additional budget, uh, it effectively um, does go to debt. Um, 
because you haven't actually collected enough rates at the beginning of the year when you set your rates um, to cover that. So effectively, um, that's just covered through effectively your equity part of your balance sheet and it's funded by debt. Can I just check one uh, substantive issue? After we began the public consultation, we had the um, August storm event landslide issue and the technical work coming together on that $18 million of expenditure. Councillors will be aware that I wrote to government proposing a 50-50 cost sharing on the betterment portion of that. As the annual plan is written, how is that final 18 million uh, handled for us, Nikki? Um, thank you, through the chair. The the 18 million was spread over three years. So, and the, uh, there was 200,000 in the year that we're just about ending, um, and there was 8 million in this annual plan. We've made no, we've taken a conservative assumption and made no assumptions about receiving any funds to offset that. So, the full 8 million is in there. Um, there were some offsets with carry forward, so it sort of, yeah, it, it has impacted our debt level. Um, I'm, uh, and I'll table for council the letter that I received yesterday from the Minister of Local Government declining to provide any support for the Nelson City Council uh, for that share of the betterment of the landslides. Uh, it is quite uh, disappointing. Uh, I want some further work being done on the level of support the government is providing for Cyclone Gabriel in districts like Auckland of the sort. Um, I think the council took the decisions uh, around the betterment of the landslide as the, being the right thing to do. My concern is that, yes, there is a benefit to the community, but there's also a substantive benefit for EQC and the government uh, by us uh, taking that approach. Um, I argued with Nikki at the time uh, that we shouldn't put all 18 million in. Um, you were right, Nikki. Uh, I was wrong. Uh, but I want to circulate that letter to uh, councillors to keep them informed of that. And I want to continue to pursue the discussion with government. One of the key issues for me is uh, I don't expect Nelson to get special treatment, but I do expect the level of support that's provided from government in the wake of the August storms to be comparable with the support that is provided by uh, other communities. And I'm going to get council officers to do some more work on that and to see whether we are getting a fair rub. But I'd ask um, Stephen um, if you could just get a copy of that letter uh, that's coming from the minister and circulate it to all councillors uh, and formally table it this morning. It doesn't change the document in the sense that you made the conservative assumption that we would not receive government support for uh, that portion of the flood recovery costs. Are there any other questions? Okay, is there someone that is then prepared to move as the uh, chair of the annual plan task force? Uh, Councillor Courtney, would you be prepared to move the adoption of resolutions one to eight with respect to the adoption of the annual plan? I'd be very happy to, do, do, to move that, uh, Mayor Nick. That's moved for items one to nine, and Councillor Benj, you'd be happy to second. I'd now like to put open to debate the adoption of the annual plan. Uh, the comments that I would firstly make is to acknowledge the work uh, of um, both Mel uh, as the chair of the task force, the other task force members, and I want to acknowledge the very collegial way in which our council collectively uh, worked our way through uh, these uh, big issues for the budget for the next year, made so much more complicated, both by those flood costs as well as the extent of inflation. Um, uh, my view is that um, we have worked well together in coming through with a document that fairly reflects uh, the views of us 13 elected representatives and acknowledge the staff uh, in that work. Any others want to make any comment? The mover would like it. I, I, could, and uh, has I could just uh, repeat probably that, uh, you know, I'm happy to move the uh, adoption of this annual plan for the 2023-24 20, year. It sets, as we know, the coming rates for um, from the 1st of July of this year. And uh, it highlights, this annual plan highlights um, changes from what was in the year three of the 
long-term plan. And the long-term plan, of course, sits under or over every annual plan. So there are, have been some changes, and these are highlighted. This is an exceptions document. This annual plan each year is an exceptions document. And uh, save for the changes, uh, the significant changes to the works program that's happened this particular year, and we've gone out to consult on that, and we've had good consultation with the community and good feedback. Uh, and as, as a result of that, the uh, costs associated with recovery uh, following the severe flood event um, have been covered and uh, um, included in the, the budgets. So that's good. And as a result of the inflation, the highest in 30 years, uh, we've sort of accommodated that in our thinking and our planning. And also rising interest costs uh, have also been factored in. But importantly, uh, we've been able to bring forward um, projects to avail ourselves of, of central government's financial support um, with a raft of different projects, quite frankly. So anyway, this is an unbalanced budget, but we mustn't let that frighten us because so was last year and so was the year before. And this was as, as a direct result of the worldwide pandemic, COVID-19 and all its experiences from there. It made a significant, it had a significant impact on council's finances. But all the way through, Manic, we went, worked, as you said, collegially, collegially on this, both with the community and around the table. But at the forefront of our minds at all times, when preparing this document, and we grappled with many, many challenging issues, um, was the community. And this is not a regressive budget at all, uh, not at all. It's looking forward to the future, but right at the forefront and front of our minds through all of these processes has been the care and well-being of this community, particularly in these very challenging times that we're working through together. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Courtney. Any other councillors wish to comment? That being the case, I'll put the resolutions one to nine with respect to the adoption of the annual report. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. Uh, that is carried. We now come to the formal setting of the rates, which is under resolution 10, covering uh, the general rate, uh, then going through to each of the uniform annual general charge, wage charges, etc. Uh, are there any uh, questions of officials with respect to the detail of the rate setting? Uh, I'll just give the overview, and that is that uh, Council deliberately used a mix of annual charge changes and rate setting to try and ensure that the rate increase was uniformly as possible uh, spread across the community, uh, whether it was with respect to the commercial, the residential or the rural ratepayers, uh, rather than a process that would have seen, as has occurred in many previous years, where while there's been a average rate increase, there have been individual rate payers that have been hit with a very wide variation from that. And I appreciate staff support in these tough times of assisting and trying to get that very sheer, even sharing of the burden uh, of the 7.2% rate increase. Is there a member that would be prepared to move the adoption of the rates uh, for 23-24? The Deputy Mayor is happy to move. Uh, seconded by Councillor Hodgson. That is now open for debate. Mr Deputy Mayor. Oh, kia ora. I would just say that in many ways we have already just voted on setting these rates by setting the budget that we will be spending. Um, and I think that that's a very important principle when it comes to the setting of our rates and I think something that we need to be particularly reflective on as we move into the long-term plan process is making sure that we are funding the work that we do. And if we want to continue or want to go out with particularly low rates increases, that will mean taking a hard inward look and reducing what we do. Uh, I'm particularly proud in this set of rating, um, this rating package is the continued reduction 
in the universal annual general charge uh, to make sure that as we are sending out those rate spills, we're actually doing it in a, in a way that is as closely tied as possible to the value of the properties and is actually not as regressive a form of taxation as we have run from this council for many, many years. And so I want to really acknowledge um, colleagues for coming to the table on that one and making sure that we don't see those um, disparities and in rates increases that we've seen um, in previous years. Uh, but again, my, my key message for this one is uh, if we've all just signed out the budget, we've now got to pay for it. Spoken like a true fiscal conservative. Uh, uh, Councillor Anderson. Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> so I haven't done any of this kind of stuff before. I, I did find it a little interesting. Um, so we had the, the, the number, the rates number, and that seemed like it was uh, communicated to the community and set and I felt that that limited what we were able to do as far as what do we need to do in the community. So we, and, and as a result, we had to advise staff that they needed to cut a lot of stuff. So I'm just wondering whether that's normal to set a rate and then work everything around it rather than see what the community needs and what our responsibilities are, even though they may be very unpopular. So I, I did find that part of the process a little bit um, um, hamstringing, you know, that kind of tied our hands a bit. We're all growing uh, our way through the process, uh, and it is true that as Mayor, uh, I've been very nervous about the level of financial stress in the community, uh, and it is fair, <laughs> Councillor Anderson, uh, for you to uh, direct it at myself in the sense that uh, I came out early on and said that I wanted us to limit our rate increase to the level of inflation. Uh, and that has provided constraints on how much that we can do. Uh, and that's a discussion that as we get into consideration for the 24, 25 year, really welcome as we all get, we're all learning our way about, about how we do that. Having said that, I would also say, I think we have the balance right. Uh, that is, uh, there is no magic to the right proportion of the level of financial pain that you put on households and businesses with the level of rates as compared with the level of pain and challenge that we pose for the chief executive and council staff, as well as what prepared a level of debt that we're prepared to tolerate with our community. At the end of the process, I am actually, I feel very comfortable uh, that we have a balanced document that reflects those each of those pressures that we have on us that we sit as responsibilities to the level people pay now, the level they pay in future with debt, and the level of service and our responsibility to provide good services and infrastructure. So I, there is no magic. There is absolutely a range of views around that. But as Mayor, I feel very comfortable uh, with where we've landed, including with the level of the rate increase. Councillor Rainey. Um, Thanks, Mayor Nick, and thanks for your comments. Um, I, I would like to um, support um, Councillor Anderson and his comments. I, I do feel that the process was back to front, so to speak, and um, and just noting that the current inflation rate is actually 6.7%, not 7.2%. If we peg our rates increases to certain things, it does provide some kind of opportunity to... Uh, to do things in a certain way when, in fact, the, the inflation rate might change underneath us. And I, I, I agree. We, we need to look at um, community need first and foremost. There's no question in my mind, and, and I would like to um, uh, say that I am going to support this. It's important to get it through. But I, um, there's no question in my mind that there are always going to be winners and losers in a rating scenario. It's a bit of a blunt instrument. There will be some property owners who will get hit harder than others, and some people will be wondering why their rates increases are a certain amount compared to others. That's always the way, and, and certainly looking at um, investigations we've had over the years and in, in, in the way that we uh, set our rates, it always comes back the same thing, that it is a blunt instrument, and there are always going to be people who are going to be 
more adversely affected. However, in saying that, I do think there are, are anomalies in what we found in this study that need to be ironed out because there are, it would appear, some sectors that have been hit harder than others. And I would hope that when we come to setting the rates in 2024 that we take the opportunity to, um, to really look closely at some of those anomalies. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rainey. Any other comments? I'm going to put the uh, resolution. Sorry, oh, Councillor Skinner. My apologies. Sorry, there might be any questions on the. I think I'll just make it brief. Um, yeah, I mean, as, as mentioned by early ones, this is rates we've said earlier, and we're adopting those now. And as you know, I, I, I'm not a fan of all of us compoundingly increasing rates. Um, but as mentioned in earlier council meetings, a lot of these decisions and costs have been burdens or put upon or gained by decisions in previous council. Um, and really the long-term plan is where we get a real chance to reshape how we spend or don't spend. Um, there may be a uh, misunderstanding around the community, especially with house prices dropping, et cetera. So why aren't rates dropping? And I'll just a reminder that um, the rates are cut up in a pie across the region, regardless of your value of your house going up or down, if it's the same as everybody else's, the pie is the same. It's only if your house or property goes significantly higher or lower than your neighbour, then your difference may be different to that 7.2% increase, which is why we have a range of it. And I was just pointing a little bit of confusion on previous years. But once again, I say I'm, I'm always worried when increased rates, but I accept we've got costs to fill. But <clears throat> I get concerned if we start calling it like we're making cuts and we're... <clears throat> have an impact on the community with cuts. No, we uh, got to be careful if we keep increasing our, our rates to inflation or beyond inflation, we are then becoming the cause of inflation when it's added up. So I think we have been prudent in many areas, obviously areas I think we can be more prudent in. But the balance there is obviously when you start putting more out there into the community, you've obviously got to take it out of the community to pay for those and then you just get the same groups or same organisations saying, hey, we need, quite rightly, need more help. But it is tough times, very tough times, and I know uh, our staff and our new CEO is working very hard to, to be as efficient under challenging times for all, but we also remember by just passing that buck on and saying, oh, we got our costs or we things we want to achieve, we'll pass it up to the rate pay. All you're doing is passing it, paying back on to the rate pay who in themselves aren't necessarily getting a seven or inflationary increase in income. And that's the same with the businesses, and I feel for the businesses um, that are, uh, are being very challenged at the moment. So I think we've all got to take a bit of a pain, but we've also just got to work a little bit harder outside of this council table to support our community and our businesses in town. So thank you for the good work in putting this together. Thanks, Councillor Skinner. Would the Deputy Mayor like to exercise his right of reply? Sure. Um, you wanted me to say no there, but uh, I, I was <laughs> deep in... Always a troublesome deputy. I know. <laughs> and and I think just reflecting on the discussion that's been had is, is the exact kind of discussion that when setting our budgets and setting our rates is exactly what we need to have, is that there will always be trade-offs between our comfort in rating increases, which again are a blunt tool and unlike a lot of other forms of government revenue don't naturally increase um, and have to be manually increased year after year. Um, but the trade-off is always that failure to invest um, in our city and, and in our people is, is incredibly detrimental to our communities. And so as we look forward into the long-term plan, those conversations need to be forefront. And so I just want to acknowledge councillors for, for raising those issues and to say that those are the kinds of robust discussions we need around this table if we want to be making good decisions for our community and into the future. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. I'll now put the resolution and the adoption of the rates for 23-24, uh, resolution uh, 10 on our agenda. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. To the contrary, say no. Uh, the resolution is carried. We now come to item seven on the agenda, and I would invite uh, Stephen Rainbow from the Mayor and Councillor's Office uh, as 
well as you, Nickley Nelson, uh, Simon Duffy, uh, before Council Committee, as we move to pages 146 to 150 on our Council agenda. Can I also acknowledge uh, Council's new Deputy Chief Executive, smartly wearing a tie uh, in his new role, uh, and also welcome you before the uh, committee, Alec. Congratulations on the appointment. I note next month you have 25 years of service, bring huge institutional knowledge, but I don't think there is either a councillor or a member of this community that does not acknowledge your passion, commitment and hard work for the city, Alec, and so congratulations on your appointment as uh, Deputy Chief Executive of the Nelson City Council. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor Nick, for those kind words and uh, for the recognition. Thank you very, very much. Um, I, I, I really am appreciative and I, and I love this city, so thank you very, very much. Um, we look forward to working you hard some more. <laughs> even more. <laughs> um, so, Mayor Nick, um, Wait, did you want to say some words? Okay. Um, so, Mayor Nick, in front of you is a report, um, a temporary exemption from payment uh, for parking in the inner city during the winter months. Um, we will take this report as read. Um, uh, Mr. Rainbow and, and, and Mr. Duffy from um, Uniquely Nelson and myself will uh, answer any questions. Um, this has come about as a result of um, an initiative from the Inner City Forum, and we present to you um, today a temporary concession for um, free parking uh, between three and five um, and the period 1st of July to the 31st of October 2023. I think the report is self-explanatory, but happy to answer any questions. I think it would be helpful. What I might do is uh, ask uh, uh, Stephen Rainbow just to make some brief comments on the paper. Then I'd like to ask uh, Simon Duffy to make some comments and the Deputy Mayor, who chairs the Inner City Forum, then take questions uh, and then uh, move into discussion on the item. Uh, can I just acknowledge how quickly this paper has been brought together? A member of the business community noted to me after the City Forum, Nick, uh, councils take six months to do anything. I'm not sure that a discussion with while the chances of council staff being able to produce any sort of report in two weeks is zero. Uh, and so could I acknowledge this pace of which uh, council has given, council officers have given uh, consideration to this temporary measure. Uh, Mr Rambo. Uh, Mayor Nick and Councillors, good morning. Um, can I just uh, make a couple of comments about this report? Can you hear me okay, Councillors? Um, the first is really picking up on what Mayor Nick has just said. Councillors have a reputation for being uh, slow and unresponsive, uh, and we have tried to pull together this report very quickly. Now, one of the downsides of that, of course, is that this has become the catalyst for an iterative process which has now included some other proposals from councillors and if this report has acted as a catalyst for a broader range of central city support measures then I think that's uh, a very laudable thing. So that's the first point. The second point is that um, council has already got a precedent, of course, for using parking uh, as an incentive to encourage people to the central city. And I should apologise uh, for the report referring to the inner city forum. It's the central city forum. Uh, there's already one hour of unpaid parking. So the precedent has already been established. And this is essentially about extending that precedent during a four month, so very limited period, uh, for a very limited time. So it is a temporary measure and it's not a permanent measure. Uh, it is designed primarily to send out a very strong signal to a business sector that, as Councillor Courtney said in his comments around the annual plan, is not just facing the highest levels of inflation for some time, but also particularly in the case of the hospitality sector, staff shortages, increased food prices, and all businesses um, are suffering from the fact that the summer take, uh, as Simon may refer to, uh, was down on previous years, so the, their cash reserves have been impacted um, uh, as a result of that. So, um, uh, Mayor Nick and councillors, if we could see this as one part of a broader package of central city support, 
world. If we think about the fact that on the 1st of August, you've got the e-bus services uh, being introduced, which will also send out another strong signal about the options and choices for people to access the central city. You will hear probably from Simon shortly about the 12th of July campaign, which uniquely Nelson will be running to attract people to the central city. And you look at the discussion which may lead to some activation measures, then this can be seen as part of a package of central city support measures going into a very difficult period for businesses. And finally, uh, Mayor Nick and councillors, if we look at this from the point of view of a cost-benefit analysis, this is a strong signal of support for the people who make our central city so vital and who give it life at very little cost to council with the potential to generate benefits for a sector which is critical to this city and its future. Mayor Nick, I think Simon would also like to make some comments, if appropriate. Thank you. Over to Yudiki Nelson, Simon. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, thank you. As you indicated, Nick, it is since two weeks ago, having this sitting here. Um, it's good to see, and that we're, we're open to discussion regarding the CBD, our businesses and our community. Um, we, as we all know, the pressure's on. And I know I've seen a lot of you out and about talking to businesses. Um, I've spoken to the businesses over the last three or four days. Um, what do you think about this initiative? And one is, what else is coming? So I explained a few other campaigns we have domestically for the top of the south and ones that we're looking at doing nationwide um, around the middle of July. So it's supporting our, supporting our businesses, and there is a lot of pressure on the likes of hospitality, um, which Ian Williams, the hospitality, or the president for hospitality, top of the south, um, has been passed on to Rohan and to the mayor, and you've got a copy now, uh, sorry, Stephen. Um, the only thing I can say is now, we need to go now. We need to support our businesses. Um, there's a list here I sent through of nine businesses that, um, will not be here in the next three or four months. And the big boxes, the franchise, and the boutique, that's our community. Um, whether it's a franchise or big box, um, they may pull out. Amazon has pulling out of all the regionals in New Zealand. It's starting to happen. It's a corporate, but those are our people in our community who don't have jobs once, that's, once that starts happening. So if I can emphasize one thing is we need, need to move quickly. The campaigns that I've been talking to, talk, um, if you wish me to elaborate on those, um, we've been working on for the last two or three months as we head into, as, as we will say, Nelson, the bottom of the bell curve, uh, bell curve for July and August. Thank you. I'd like to uh, hand over to the Deputy Mayor who chairs the Central City Forum and has worked with officers on the preparation of the paper. Sure, uh, I don't have much to say on the paper itself that's obviously come from officers. What I will say is I think it's incredibly clear uh, that the economic conditions facing our community and facing our local businesses are, is presenting a significant risk, um, and particularly over the winter months, which we know are challenging. And I reflect on this request coming through from the forum and, and I think the history of engagement that as a council we have had um, in terms of being proactive about delivering positive change in our city centre. And I think what we're, we've seen is, is a bit of a continuation of a pre-existing trend, which is council has historically failed to deliver much in the city centre in terms of investment and in terms of activation. And I think businesses have gotten, and, and residents as well, have gotten used to that and have reduced what they're even bothering to ask us for. And I I don't think that this as a measure is near enough to, to actively support and uplift what is the sort of heart of our region, um, which is why when we open for debate, I'll be moving in uh, and just foreshadowing an amendment to provide greater direct support towards activating our city centre because I I think that these passive measures, whilst 
can play some role um, aren't going to be enough, particularly over the coming months where, as Simon's just highlighted, we have a number of businesses in a really, really tough space. And we need to be very active in our role of support, but also of inspiration and that direct activation. I'm just wondering about process because I like to keep things pretty informal. Um, you've mentioned that you are um, and circulated to council as a further idea. I wouldn't mind you just taking the opportunity now to just put that on the table so that councillors have got sort of all three items of the of the package. If you're comfortable with that, definitely. I'm happy to do that. Um, and why don't you specifically speak to that additional proposal? So. What I'm proposing is um, the establishment of a city centre winter activation fund, um, specifically driven towards supporting uh, low cost short term interventions to provide activation, whether they be events or projects, uh, whether it be bringing further art or music into our city centre or whatever else comes out of the uh, creativity that is present within our city um, because I, I've already had countless conversations with people putting forward ideas for that activation um, but with no real mechanism to deliver it and so this would be the opportunity to, to help support that as a short-term intervention. I also think um, as we look towards the long-term plan we need to be doing some more strategic thinking around what the future of our city centre looks like and what our role and in investment in that space looks like. Thanks, Deputy Mayor, and I acknowledge your work on that. I also acknowledge councillors that have been part of informal discussions around how we respond appropriately to the level of pressure uh, that our central city businesses are under. What I'd like to do uh, is to now just uh, welcome um, questions. Um, then after there's been some questions and some um, sort of discussion, uh, can I uh, take a relaxed mode where people can ask questions of the chair of the Central City Forum as well as our, as our officers? Uh, and uh, we'll start with Councillor Courtney, who had his hand up first, and then I'll come to Councillor Sanson. Thank you, Mayor Nick, and thank you for your presentation, Stephen, and, uh, and Alec, and uh, Simon as well. Look. I really want to know, because this does not excite me, this is not the answer, as far as I'm concerned, it certainly is not the answer, and I'm so heartened, thank goodness, we've had an initiative from the Deputy Mayor to introduce these other items, two, three, and four. Look, we could be a laughing stock, quite frankly, because between three and five, you have, you're going to offer them free parking. Well, then, if they come into town on a cold winter's afternoon after picking up the kids from school, mum or dad, granddad, grandma, sisters and brothers bring their families in, brothers and sisters in, to shop, they get an hour free anyway. And I'm so, I'm so pleased, so grateful, because what irritates me most of all, and to answer this, please, this cuts right across the objectives, the policies, the plans relating to modal shift. This does. This particular idea uh, rushed through uh, quickly, quickly, quickly. Everyone said quickly. is not a good look. And I'll tell you what, what happens to modal ship? Um, it's creating a more sustainable transport system that benefits everybody, and yet we're doing this. You see, I can't see the benefits. So I'd like a comment. Have you kept... The policies and plans of modal shift in mind when you've set this, put this up. Happy for um, answers. Obviously, Halleck has the overall responsibility of transport policy, and there's a question there, and I'd be interested in any comments that either Stephen or Simon uh, wishes to make in response. Um, through the chair, I don't think it's um, uh, through you, Manic. I don't think it's one or the other. I think we um, we, we we were approached to consider um, this proposal. Um, in the bigger scheme of things, I think that this doesn't really um, cross over into the modal shift. Our council is still heavily invested and 100% committed to modal shift. It's all about providing um, our residents and those visiting um, Nelson uh, with choice. Um, uh, as uh, Mr. Rainbow has indicated earlier, 
We've got a fantastic uh, public transport uh, news service commencing on the 1st of August. This is about taking the needs of the, the business in, businesses into account. Um, but I don't think I don't think this overrides um, our modal shift and our strong desire to to, to provide our residents um, and those visiting Nelson with choice. But I can certainly uh, appreciate um, the question that you have asked, Councillor. Did you want to add any comment to either Simon or Stephen? Yeah, if you know what. Um, there's many ways of getting into the city, whether it be bicycle, walking, EV cars, or the traditional car. Um, it's not, what, what, what's been proposed is not just about parking. It's about the other initiatives we've got planned for the next three or four months. This is one component of um, energising the CBD. The campaign on July the 12th is a domestic, and we've just spent the last week doing videos of businesses. It'll be very digital and it'll be in your face. Everything gets switched across to radio, digital, print, huge databases we've got to come to Nelson is open for business and support our businesses, local supporting locals. The nationwide campaign is in conjunction with the airport and that will go from Cape Ranger down to Bluff. So we take Nelson out of Nelson to bring people to Nelson. Our component of that three month campaign, working alongside, we are part of that campaign, but we're not all of it. Um, as in Unikey Nelson, uh, the airline is, um, airport is working with different airlines to bring people to Nelson, whether it be weekends away, couples, families, and they're working with the other airports. Um, and there is quite a good budget behind that. That is for over the next three to four months. There's some other ideas are put forward at uh, the beginning of the year for the beautification of the CBD and the patent of the black bollards involving our ethnic community. I've got free paint, last 10 years. That's just one that's component. The nationwide, the campaign, the parking. It's not just all about the parking. It's about re-energising our CBD, supporting our businesses, which we always do, the council supporting our businesses over the next three or four months as we head in towards spring and summer. I cannot emphasise enough the bleed that is currently going on. And when we put it to the businesses in the last three or four days, and we went out, they were fully behind it, what else? One person says, what difference, one business, a boutique business, what difference will it make? What difference will it make to this city? And we chatted away for about five or ten minutes. We could have, I could have said we're going to spend a million dollars. It would make no difference. What was coming through from this business is the financial and fiscal pressure on our businesses right now. And by the time I'd finished, she says, it is an idea. I'm just frustrated, and it's right here for them. So maybe I'm speaking a, word, a bit loud, a bit more passion. It is real. Yeah. These are our community. These are our people. These will be your daughters. Your brothers, your sisters, your parents, right now in our CBD. Thanks, Simon. So I think there are things, not sorry, Mel, it's not just one thing, it's a combination of many things and initiatives and strategies that have been th uh, thought through. Um, thank you. Thanks, Simon. I just wanted to stress, just for Councillor aware of the format, what I'd like us to do at this session is uh, focus on questions. I know that there are a range of views. When it comes to the expressing of your range of views, I'm going to make sure there's a good opportunity for all councillors to be able to contribute. So we're very much focused on any questions that you have, either for our officers, for Simon Duffy from Uniquely Nelson, uh, but I'm also happy to take questions to the Deputy Chair, uh, to the Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Sanson, then Skinner, then Rainey. And the emphasis on, and then I'll have uh, Councillor Paki Paki, focus on questions, because like I said, there will be the opportunity for the debate on the resolutions we're considering. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Nick, through the Chair. Um, kia ora, Stephen. Congratulations, Alec, and kia ora, Simon. Um, so just a couple of quick questions. I've heard comments around the metres, that something around at 4.30, they're no longer... Um, you know, a charged or the parking <laughs> parking um, fees are not enforced after four thirty. Um, can someone just clarify for me what the situation is there? That's one question, and the second one is, what is the hourly charge um, for parking in the main car parks or the main street? It's, I'm assuming it's like one or two dollars an hour. So. It's, Someone could just answer that for me, that would be great. Uh, through you, Mayor Nick. Uh, so we have both Mandy and Michelle here who, who runs the contract for the inner city parking enforcement. Can we just be clear about the fact that one of the key 
objectives here um, uh, is to send out a very clear and non-confusing signal to the public who uh, Councillor Courtney prefer to use the choice of the private motor vehicle, so that won't be everyone. For, for, for those who, for example, pick up the kids after school and do have, a, a, um, therefore, a number of people that would be impractical for um, for them to use, for example, the enhanced bus service. This is about sending out a very clear signal that from three o'clock onwards, they will not have to pay for parking. So we need to focus on that key objective. And then the detailed questions, um, Councillor Sanson, that you've asked, um, are best answered probably by Mandy. But the short answer to your question is yes, around the 4.30, that's correct. And I think the parking fees at the moment, uh, Mandy, uh, per hour, do we know? So through the chair, the, the fees for the parking meters can be, yeah, it, it, there's an hourly rate, but you know you can choose uh, lesser time than that. Yeah. yeah. So, so the so revenue. What is the hourly rate? Oh, sorry. It's, it's two, I think it's two dollars. It's two dollars. Mm. an hour mm. through the chair. Okay. Thanks. So. so from 4.30 onwards, it doesn't really cost anyway, and it's $2 an hour. So um, if we've got free parking from 3 p.m. onwards, we have a one hour free from 3 to 4. Charges don't kick in from 4.30, so we're talking about a free half hour from, you know, in that period. Okay, and then... Um, the 20 to 25, oh, 20,000 from the city that's coming from the city development operating budget. Um, I'm just curious as to what that um, would normally have been, um, you know, earmarked to and what, um, you know, what is not going to happen because of that or, um, yeah, if somebody can just give me some guidance around that. Uh, ask the Deputy Mayor, um, the $20,000 that you've discussed with staff or the Chief Executive, who's best able to answer that question? I can kick us off by saying that there will, there will have to be a reprioritisation process. Um, obviously, this isn't planned. Um, even if it is coming out of existing budgets, it's not planned, and I think that will have to be a robust discussion. Um, do you want to see any light in that area? Um, anybody at the table or the chief executive? I'm sorry, I was talking to Robin about when that was the question. Before. The question was the twenty thousand uh, dollars. Councillor Sanson has fairly asked the question. Well, um, what budget will that come out of, and what will we not be doing as a consequence of uh, putting the twenty grand uh, into the deputy mayor's proposal of a city centre winter activation fund? Uh, th thank you, Councillor Sanson. Um, as you as you know. Um, you've now set the budget for next year. Uh, I'm constantly managing the budget throughout the year, and the SLT is, you know, every, every, every month we go through the budget and we, we reprioritise all the time because we, things come up out of the blue, and we need to move we need to move things around. So this money will come out of the, um, the city um, development budget, but um, so we'll we will move things around as, as appropriate, uh, and we will have to reprioritise and, and make take some action within the SLT to to look at what we can stop doing. But, what effectively the, the direction from the Deputy Mayor is to take 20 grand out of the central city that could have been programmed expenditure and bring it forward right at this time when we think there is the acute need for us to do something extra for the central city businesses. Councillor Scott. Oh, sorry, just Thank one you. final follow-up um, question on that then. And, and I'm, um, has this been, is this supported by the city centre development team staff? Uh, it's supported by the chief executive and the senior leadership team, and I'm sure that the staff will fall into line with that conversation. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Skinner. Cheers. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> I wish I had such control over councillors. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Councillor Skinner, sorry. Thank you. We've, we've got here what was in the report, and I see we've got a, I'm not sure if it's an amendment or a new... Um, substantive motion here from the panel that provided this. You've got you three of you have worked hard from the, for this. How does this affect what we've got on the table? I know this is a lot. This is different to parking. We've got about moving some money from one 
City Centre Fund to another City Centre Fund. Is this something you think will work in with what we've got here? Perhaps I could, uh, through you, Mayor Nick, answer that, Councillor Skinner. Uh, if we go back to the Mayor's opening comments about responsiveness and timeliness, ideally, Councillor Skinner, this report would have come to you with a range of central city support measures, apart from the one request which was initially received from the Central City Forum. Okay. So this... Um, just to reinforce what I said earlier, uh, I would now see the, the proposed parking changes as one part of a broader central city support package and therefore is entirely consistent with, and if it has indeed sparked this discussion about the need to support the central city businesses, then I see that as wholly consistent uh, and, and entirely positive. Does that answer your question, Councillor? Yeah, that's, Council? that's good, and, and um, thanks for that. And in regards to that from the officer report, and if I may ask <coughs> Simon, in regards to you brought this great idea forward for um, encouraging people to come a bit longer into Nelson, <coughs> having this funds and moved around, does this distract or add to what you're trying to achieve? I would welcome any other strategies from, from the councillors or from the council and what we've got planned over the next three, three or four months. Uh, just a correction on the, it's actually from two o'clock when you think about it. They get one hour free parking. So it's not like an hour, an hour and a half. So they get one hour free parking, and after three o'clock, they don't have to pay. So that's just, just a slight correction there if, it's, yeah. if it has been misunderstood. Um, so there's, um, if there's funding there, twenty or $25,000 for activation. Um, we've been involved in that last year with um, likes of the Rock, Rock Quest, um, Beats on the Street, other different initiatives we've used to do activation on the streets, whether it's entertainment or arts. Um, but I do welcome um, the discussion of what we've got planned for the next three or four months. If you have any other strategies or anything you think could be beneficial to our to our business community, I do welcome that. Thank um, you. And just quickly, um, Officer Lavertis, in regards to once again, we've got money that's already in the operating budget for City Centre. We'd be taking 25k out of that and putting it into a an activation fund, how's that sit? It just seems to be like we're doing, taking money out of one thing for another focus, but do you think it's all helped and working with the wheels of motion that we want to kickstart? Through Manic, I think that question's been answered um, uh, by Mr. Rainbow and the Chief Executive. I think it'll be a, a balance and okay. uh, we, will, we will make it work. Cool, that gives me confidence. And through the um, Mayor Nick, just for process here, we've, we've had a, um, a motion, a recommendation to table. We've got what was Mentioned to be an amendment, but is this now the substantive motion that we're debating on? What we've got red and black, or is that uh, amendment? My intention, to the original my intention is to take questions based on the officer report, the report they have before us. I just thought so that people aren't sort of what I call boxing in the dark, uh, is having some idea where this direction. And I thought it was helpful for the Deputy Mayor to be quite open with the Council about some informal discussion. So at the moment, we're taking questions on the officer's report. After we've completed those questions, it is my intention to seek a mover and a seconder uh, to the resolution, including the amendment, right. and then to debate that. So you will have the opportunity to express a view of support or opposition after this phase of questions. I'm going to have Councillor Rainey, then I have Councillor Pakipaki, and then Councillor Stallard, and then Anderson. Uh, and I just, uh, I just stress this is for the opportunity for questions. Councillor Rainey. Uh, thanks, Mayor Nick. Um, yes, I, I have a question, and I'd also like to foreshadow an amendment. Um, can you tell me, um, can I call you Stephen? <laughs> um, uh, do you have any stat? Are there any stats on how long people park, the length of time that they park in our CBD, especially during? The winter months. What is the what is the average length of time that people park? So, Councillor Rainey, you'll notice in the report that we have not done a detailed transport analysis, which won't come as any surprise to you, uh, because we have to see this measure for what it is, which is primarily sending out a signal to the central city businesses in response to their request at the forum that we look at this issue. The 
and I'll describe it as the cursory analysis that was done by Alec and his team suggested that this would not have dramatic transport consequences. So it is primarily a measure of business support rather than a transport policy. Thanks. Well, subsequent question. So I, I do note, note that under 4.5, you make it quite clear that no detailed analysis, right. which would tend to suggest that some kind of analysis had been made, but no detailed analysis has been undertaken by officers as to whether this would be a positive stimulus for businesses at all. So why do you think it sends a strong signal? Why is it, I know it sends a signal, but why does it send a strong signal when we don't really know whether it's going to make any difference? At all. Uh, through you, Mayor Nick, uh, the council has established a central city forum. Um, if we are to give mana to these um, democratic institutions and channels that we provide to engage with the business community, then we have to show that we are serious about it. Whether it's climate change or whether it's business support, we've got a forum that this body has established to engage with the central city community that Rohan addressed earlier. And the one thing, the one signal from the last forum that they sent out and the one request that they made was for us to explore this measure. Now, what has resulted subsequently, of course, is a, uh, uh, I will describe it as a significantly enhanced range of proposed measures for central city support. But this is primarily about us showing that we listen to the people in this community, whether they're business, whether they're families, whether they're individuals, and we respond appropriately and accordingly. So okay. um, further to that, um, Nick, thank you. Further to that, um, I would just like to um, echo Councillor Courtney's um, uh, thoughts in regards to um, the Deputy Mayor putting up further enhanced ideas. And um, I would like to take this opportunity also to um, propose an amendment, which um, I think we can put up on the screen. Be helpful just to sort of flag the rough topic, and then we can move around. And well, I've, I've been it. I've been at this table for for quite a few years. I've I've heard this same issue, and and it's a legitimate issue yep. of downturn in the winter months. Come across this table so many times. We need to do something about this. That's more, and I don't take this the wrong way. That's more than knee jerk, and I'm not saying it's. You know, I'm not necessarily arguing against it. The, the idea that um, Simon's bought. But what we need is proper planning. We need proper planning. We need to commission a proper retail strategy or retail and hospitality strategy, if you want to go further, both for the city centre and for this and for the wider city. Otherwise, <laughs> we're going to go winter after winter after winter going, oh, God, things are grim. What are we going to do? Oh, free parking. Well, we need more than that. We need a lot more than that. And I do acknowledge that Uniquely Nelson has brought plenty of ideas to the table, Simon. I do acknowledge that over the years there's been many initiatives. If we're truly serious about supporting our retail, this sounds like debate, if we're truly supportive of, uh, truly uh, serious about supporting our retail sector, let's put some resource into commissioning a proper strategy on dealing with the issues that are facing Nelson City on an annual yeah. basis. Having had that uh, discussion, that's part of today. Can I just uh, ask a very um, deliberate question off the back of Pete's and my own? The reason we have parking fees is so that our parking doesn't get all filled up by people sitting there for too long. Do council officers, Alec, yourself or others, believe there is any risk of our car parks as a consequence of this policy of having a free policy after three o'clock uh, effectively all clogging up. Because uh, that is the principal reason why we have parking limits and parking fees. Do you think in the winter months that's proposed in this paper that we have a risk uh, of our car parks becoming overfill and as a consequence being counted to public interest? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Councillor Park Parky. Uh, 
I have I'm not turning on my microphone. With the deputy mayor? Yeah, you're probably looking not a wrong way. Um, uh, yeah, in, in many ways, it was a, an arbitrary figure that came from discussions around where there would be comfort around this table to get something going. My, I would gladly, well, my initial figure was 50. Um, I, I just think we need something, and I will take what it is, whether it's coming from existing budgets, whether it's unbudgeted expenditure, whether it's $20,000 or whether it's $50,000, I just think we need something, and this seems to be the one that hit a comfortable measure around this table um, from the discussions I had. Okay, good point. So my, uh, I guess, the supplementary for that would be that if we've got that amount, at what point do we reach diminishing returns where it's not effective, which I, I believe this amount is not going to be effective, um, and what sort of, uh, I mean, we've we've got a bit of another arbitrary thing in here where we're sign, kind of saying we're going to sort of throw it at it, but we don't have, I would rather that we, we focus, would it be better for us to focus on uh, a, a more substantial amount and at least have some sort of uh, ring fence of what we're, we're actually going to spend it on. I think that would be accountable to the, the community. I'm going to ask, hand over to both the Chief Executive and I'll make some comment in respect to that as well. So, um, uh, uh, Chief Executive. Thank you, Councillor Paki Paki. Um, this, was, this initiative was uh, was raised with me um, from the Deputy Mayor, I think, uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, look, as, as, a, as, a, as a further gesture of, of, of the issue that is currently facing the, 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 the city businesses. I would like, um, if we're going to take this further, that we need to take this in, in, as part of the, the LTP and sort of that more strategic thinking that Pete's talking about and others, you know, we really do need to do, I don't want to do a knee-jerk reaction, you know, we, I, I can manage a small amount like this through those ups and downs that we, that I, I'm constantly managing, but if you start lifting it to a level of you know, fifty thousand or, or more, that becomes a substantive problem that we, you know, we should have taken into account in the annual planning process. So, look, this is a gesture. I accept this is a, a possibly a token gesture, but it is a, it is moving in the right direction. It is signalling that as part of the LTP, we really need to think of this more seriously. Thank you. Uh, the deputy mayor has a further comment, and then I'm going to hand over to Councillor Anderson. Yeah, look, I mean. Again, I, I think that that strategic thinking is needed and I'm supportive of what Councillor Rainey's put up. The reality is that we've got pressure here and now. Exactly. We need intervention now. And actually, that money can go a decent way in terms of small-scale activation. I mean, there is a, a large number of events that can be put on. We're not talking about radical transformation here. We're, we're talking about a tough winter where we can just inject a little bit of colour in life in addition to a number of the other winter events that will already be coming along. We've got Tadamaroa coming up. We do have other things happening. This is really just to dot the weeks in between where that isn't presently um, there. And I just reflect on my time on this council. We've had this discussion a lot. What we haven't had is much happen. Um, and that's what I really want us to just rip the Band-Aid off and go, we need to do something here and now. Will it be perfect? Probably not. Um, and, and it is deliberately, I've left it quite open because I think it needs to be about those conversations on the ground about what could work, what is, and, and develop as new ideas come forward and as the, the picture changes on the ground as well. Councillor Anderson. Yeah, thank you through the mayor. Uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, so, uh, trial temporary exemption. Are we? Are, I know we haven't collected any data beforehand. Are we going to be collecting any data during the um, the trial? Um, through the May, we will. Yes, we we will be monitoring. Yes. Any further question, Councillor Anderson? Got us gold over to Councillor uh, Brand, then Robert. Uh, thank you, Shredi I've got a few different questions for each of you, if that's okay. The first question would be, um, you say temporary measure for this winter's month. Are we then going to track and then use that as an ongoing winter month activation, depending on the uptake or the um, feedback or the positive or negative impact that it has on our central city? Um, 
We hadn't done this before over the winter months regarding parking. Um, if, it, if it's successful and we collect the data and we go into next year, the bleed has really happened this year. We came out of COVID two and a half years ago. And it was a bit of a honeymoon period. People have finished spending because they've been stuck at home. The then went, just give it up, as we all know anyway, I think everyone in this room, as we hit summer, make money. You come down, most businesses, especially in hospitality, budget to lose money in July and August. That they always do. And it's, and it's always happened. The last, um, well, last 12 months, we came um, out of winter. Um, we came across summer. Summer didn't peak. And, wasn't, and didn't go as long as it traditionally would have three or four or five years ago. It came up, it was short, and it went back down again. So those cash reserves that the hospitality or retailers, special hospitality, um, I'm feeling for that at the moment, they are really hurting. Um, margins are different, whatever. The, so what we're proposing, and it's, parking's just a small part of it, and the overall plan over the next three or four months is to get our businesses through into spring, I'll tell you right now, and I've heard this time and time again, if they get out of the leases tomorrow, they'll be gone. Leases are holding them in place. So what are we doing? What can we do? Collectively, the ideas we put forward, Pete, Trudy, Tim, all of us around here, what ideas can we do to support these businesses? So your uh, question, Trudy, is um, if it works well this winter, we would again next winter. It depends on the circumstances. If we have a good summer, yep. will it be required? Will this initiative be required? Okay. So, um, and we have, um, like I said, we've been working on these initiatives, knowing what's coming. Another thing we're reintroducing is the Buddy for Business, which is about our well-being for our businesses. We launched that two years ago at the Art Refinery. That's coming back. And it's there's a lot more enhancement to it. Um, we just put on MBS as a major sponsor, and there'll be money coming from that sponsorship to support our businesses and the well-being, marketing, and the financial side. Just need to keep the questions yeah. in the house Sorry. nice and crisp if yeah. I'm going to be able to keep the agenda yeah. to schedule. We've got a workshop to move on to. I don't want to cut off because this is a, when you have a sort of a late and an urgent item like this, I do like to give it more space, uh, but, but equally you need to keep it tight. So, thank you. So the next question is then, previously we tried late night shopping within the central city to increase, I'm not sure if I thought that was in winter, to try and create some activation. Is that in part of the initiative to tag on to the um, free parking in that period of time, or is that um, something for a further discussion with that working group? Um, the late night shopping usually um, comes out of the events like Te Aroma. Uh, Four Lanes Festival is coming back in September. As that's when they'll actually open up for those events if they choose okay. to do that. Um, okay. So that's it's not something we've done. That late night shopping is only really based around events. Okay, so okay, that's good to know. And then my next question would be for probably Rohan, number four. Um, in your um, uh, recommendation, um, the group sets the, well, they set the parameters of what will be actioned and then align it only for the winter months. Is that what that is saying? I think it is inherent in it being called the Centre City Winter Activation Fund uh, is that it is to be spent during those months of winter and we can stretch winter through to the end of uh, October. Um, I'd look at 3A. 3A. Which does specify that it okay. um, needs to be spent. The other, the other the guidance the that I would provide is we're setting an upper limit of 20 grand, uh, but I've got no doubt with the chief executive and with the others involved, if they underspend that, that is not an issue. Every initiative that comes forward, I have heard three or four really good ideas from the business community of music or other events that would only be one or two grand that I think a nimble Ford council could support that would give a bit of a shot in the arm over summer. I don't think they are big enough to bring them all to council, but by giving the staff with those two groups a bit of guidance, uh, I think could see the money wisely spent. But the clearer inclination is the money would be spent in winter. Now that's okay, because I'm just aware... We're on the, what is it, the 20-something or other of June right now. That's right. And, um, you know, that is a very short, short window um, for the immediate impact. And um, I just want to come back to my next question, which is, histor uh, I think it was at the AGM of the Uniquely Nelson last year, that a presentation was done about a retail strategy. 
um, and it was done at the museum. I'm pretty sure it was last year's AGM, might have been the year before. Um, from that presentation and the retail strategy, has there been some um, uptake from what was shared at that presentation? Because the businesses were quite excited about um, what was there, and I knew there was a lot of council staff, and I figured that with our long-term plan coming up that there might have been some, um, as touched on by Councillor Rainey about a retail strategy, that that might have been something that could influence this very short window of number four. <laughs> um, Trudy, I think you're referring to AGM, where we do a presentational wrap-up for the year. Yeah. Um, a lot of that is duplicated for the next 12 months coming forward. We now have and just re-signed, um, we're about to re-sign a three-year agreement with between New Zealand Nelson and Nelson City Council. And then there are strategies and KPIs that we're measured by. Um, it's interesting that we actually outgrew our contract. What was in the contract, we're doing a lot more. Um, so those those strategies and things are actually scheduled throughout the year. So what you see at that AG in the presentation, a oh. lot of that is replicated and other new ideas that come in or yeah, that come to I us. appreciate that, but this was an external presentation. It was an external person that you brought in from, I think he came from Wellington or somewhere else about the retail strategy. I can talk to you off record about that and bring it forward, but there were some really good presentations, and I'm just thinking because of the short window that we've got, that you've already got some knowledge there that it might help activate something quicker um, and speedily without a lot of... Um, time needed to hit the ground because our businesses, we need our businesses in our central city, so we need to get them supported. Thanks, Councillor Brand. I'm going to take Councillor Rollo and any other councillors who have not yet raised a question. Then I'm going to take a break for a quick coffee and then come back and deal with the resolutions. So over to Campbell, uh, Councillor Rollo. Thanks, Minnick. Can I just check that Councillor Stella didn't have his hand up before me? Cool. Um, I have three quick questions. I'm not sure who's going to answer them, so I'll call them out and then whoever can say them, they'll be appreciative if I can get answers. Um, the first question is, parking areas that are not in the CBD, are these going to be enforced more after 3 p.m., i.e. the areas in Stoke that we send the parking police to? Will there be an increase in that? And my second question is, what defines city centre parking? What streets and car parks are included in the city centre parking? And the third question, it's a question, but it's more a statement, is has the council considered free buses into the Nelson CBD from 3pm? And that come from a citizen who spoke to me who doesn't have a car and said, what's the point in free parking because I can't drive? Uh, can I deal with the third question? The bus service is a joint venture between Whaka Katahi, between the Tasman District Council and the Nelson City Council. Yes, we could pursue changes of that sort, but you would need to get all three of those agreed. You also need to be aware that we have a contract uh, with Nelson Coach Lines, and that would involve a change of that contract. My honest view would be to be able to get all those ducks in a row to change contracts and those things would be difficult to achieve in the short time frame on an initiative that we're wanting to take place and come into effect next week. It's more complicated when you've got multiple agencies involved, um, but, you know, longer term in that issue, item number six could be considered. Uh, Alec, would you like to have a crack at uh, Councillor Rollo's first two questions? Um, Medic, I think the... Um I'm unsure that um, this initiative should, is, is linked to um, enforcement elsewhere um, in the um, in the city, um, and, and I think that's my short answer. I don't think it's one or the other. I think the, uh, as we've noted in the report, EIL will still be um, enforcing safety issues, warrant of fitnesses, rego. So I don't think it's one or the other. Um, and in terms of your second question, uh, what comprises the CBD? So. Uh Councillor Rollo, this applies to the on-street parking on those streets like everything from Halifax through Hardy Bridge and Trafalgar, where you currently pay at a metre. And again, if we go back to, this, to the single purpose of this uh, proposal as part of the wider proposal is to send out a simple, clear and non-confusing message to the public, and that is that there will be no pay, paid parking after three o'clock. 
Okay, that concludes the questions. It's my intention to take a five minute break until 10.30. When we come back after 10.30, we'll be speaking movers and seconders and then for us to resolve and have a debate on the resolution. Thank you.
move from here, uh, the resolutions that in consultation with the Deputy Mayor, uh, there's been a little bit of uh, massaging uh, over the weekend. So intention is to move resolutions one to six. Uh, it is my uh, intention if there are requests uh, to vote on them individually, because already just through the questions, I think there are a range of views if there is that request from council. Uh, seeking a seconder, uh, Rohan, se happy to second. And speaking to the resolution, uh, I would like to give sort of a broad of a frame. The first thing is I believe our central city retailers are facing something of a perfect storm. The first thing that they've obviously been hit by is three hard years uh, of COVID disruptions. I don't think we should underestimate the degree to which the closure of State Highway 6 through to Christmas last year removed uh, two months of their best trading. The part that I've been finding and quite taken back by the level of stress of many of our small retail businesses is that with the government support around tax and landlord support around rentals, many of those measures involved a deferral of expense for those businesses. And those deferrals are now coming to a head. So I've spoken to a number of retail businesses where their rents during COVID were reduced by 30%, but as a consequence, they now have to pay that back in this year. You combine that with the economy now being in recession for the first time in more than a decade, uh, and I think uh, we need to recognise uh, that scale of pain that there is within the retail sector. Now, I've seen a number of, whether it be councils or government, respond to <clears throat> acute periods. And the nature of councils and government is that you do six months of analysis or 12 months of analysis. It is my personal view that, for instance, some of the support that was provided by both councils and government through COVID took a year or two to get through the system by which the issue had passed on. And I do accept that the process around which this paper and this issue has come to the fore is not perfect. But there's a real test for councils as big organisations with big assets as to whether you are sufficiently nimble to be able to respond to the issue of a time in a timely way. And yes, Pete, uh, the perfect world would be to have such an initiative being taken part as a longer term strategy. And the issue of retailers having a tough time in the winter is not new, and that is a fair point. But it's my view that if you preceded doing some small initiatives until you got a strategy, you would be negligent in your duties to respond to the challenges of the time. And sometimes councils need to be nimble-footed. The reason I am supportive of the initiative around parking is this. It is very little cost for some gain. Every initiative should be tested as to how much does it cost you and how much gain do you get. What is the point of Nelson having empty car parks in the city for the next four months when retailers are on the bones of their ass? Uh, my view is the reason you have parking fees is because you're worried the car parks are going to be filled up with people wasting time and being there for a long time and not allowing the turnover of those car parks. I think there is zero risk at any time between now through to October of there being insufficient car parks in the city, and that is a consequence of freeing up those rules and allowing those car parks to be used more will allow some extra shoppers in town, little costs and some gain. The point that a number of councillors have made is that the parking initiative is small in the big picture. Absolutely that is true, but that is not an excuse for not doing some things I think the initiative that the Deputy Mayor has taken as the discussion around this has occurred is A, that there are other things that we could also do. We could create some music events that occur at the 1903 Square. There have been some other quite small initiatives that in my view, again, would be helpful sending the right signal that this council understands businesses under pressure and doing some smart, small initiatives that will bring um, some people into the city. So that is why I am supportive and moving the resolution. With respect to the development of a central city retail strategy, 
you could spend easily a couple of hundred grand on a strategy. A fraction compared to a, a, a lot more than the very small amount of money that we're funding. If I have a frustration and as the incoming mayor uh, of the city, is enormous amounts of effort. I've added up over 48 different strategies. This council does not have a problem in writing strategies. It has a problem in getting on and doing stuff. That does not make me opposed to it. It just simply says that it needs to be done with a bit more process around it for it to be worthwhile. And that is why the amended resolution that I've discussed with the Deputy Mayor says that we've set up a central city forum. If there is to be a discussion on a longer term strategy, then it needs to be done uh, with the Central City Business Forum and to be considered part of the long-term plan. And I think that is a good initiative, actually, regardless of whether we are in this very perfect storm recessionary environment that I worries me for the next few months. I think for the longer-term view of the Central City over the next five, ten years, uh, it is a good proposition, but I'd prefer... Uh, that that be seen as a long-term initiative rather than responding to the short term. The last bit is around the concerns about modes of transport. Uh, it is my view that if we are to have a vibrant city, we need to be supportive of those people that have different transport choices. I want to support and enhance our biking services for people to bike into the city. I am in, very enthusiastic about the playground and providing a new reason for that group of people to come into the city, but equally so with the improvement in the bus services on the 1st of August, that actually there still will be people with cars. And I come back to the point, I think we'd be letting our city down if we have a whole lot of empty car parks in the central city because we rigidly want to follow normal parking policy at a time when our retailers are, are under pressure. And my view is it does not compromise our overall transport policy of improving choices across all modes uh, in how people can access and retail in the city. And they are the reasons that I support such resolutions before Council. Councillor Skinner. I think I'll be very brief and um, very supportive of what we've got there in front of us. Um, we've started this term saying, hey, we want the CBD to be a success. We feel the hurt around the region. We've had a city centre forum um, where we said we will listen and engage. Um, the city centre forum, the businesses came to us with a very simple request and a very small request is to give an opportunity to put something that we can get behind and add to in regards to parking in the city. And this is what we got here. So if we, if we say no to that, that would be a clear signal that we're not actually engaging, we're not listening. Um, so I very much support this. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Skinner. Councillor Sanson. Um, thank you, Mayor Nick, through the Chair. So I have some mixed views around the recommendations in front of us. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge um, the Deputy Mayor, um, Stephen Rainbow and staff who have been responsive to the Inner City Working Group and the request from businesses. I think that is um, admirable and I agree that, um, you know, we do need to be more responsive and agile as an organisation. So I um, am comfortable with the way in which this has come to the table. Short notice, I don't have any issue with that at all. Um, you know, I think I'm certainly supportive of measures to help our local businesses to survive and to thrive. I think that they're just a critical part of our community and we definitely need to do what we can to support them. However, I do not believe that parking is the issue. <laughs> I think, um, you know, our community has high costs of living that are significantly impacting discretionary spending. I think there's been, you know, a, a cataclysmic change in consumer behaviour through COVID. There's just so much more online shopping. Mm. Our city centre has extremely high cost of rents and leases. So, you know, we have a small number of landowners who um, seem for the most part to be fairly inflexible in reducing rent costs. And I wonder if, you know, if we're thinking about community hubs and that kind of thing, whether we should actually be in the longer term thinking about where the council has a place in um, having a city centre property that we are able to rent out at community rates to local, you know, makers and creators. 
you know, so that we can actually pull some levers to enable our local, um, you know, businesses to afford to be in the city centre. We also only have a handful of people living in the city centre, and um, you know, we recognise time and time again that that is an issue. I feel that the um, parking, whilst it's not a great cost or a great loss of income, I think it reinforces the misleading idea that the central city's woes have something to do with parking. I just don't think that that's the case at all. I think it's highly unlikely to make much of a difference in terms of people spending in the city, central city. I think that activation is much more likely to help this. And I think that there is a risk it may lead to calls for extended free periods of parking to be continued once the warmer weather continues, which may be hard to resist. And I think that's going to happen you know, winter after winter. And it goes against our own parking strategy, which really um, was well-researched, evidence-based, and emphasised that we should be prioritising public space for people rather than for cars and modal shift. So I'm not going to vote against the recommendations, but I don't support the um, free parking measure. Thanks, Councillor Sanson. I'm going to come to Councillor Hodgson. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor Nick. Um, I was initially going to start by calling this a good news story, um, and to a degree I think that it is. Uh, I'm really pleased with how quickly this came to Council, and I want to acknowledge officers uh, and Rohan for bringing this, um, and uniquely Nelson for bringing this to the Council table so promptly. Why I don't think it's a good news story on the whole is because we've heard uh, what we're seeing uh, in the city centre around the pain that businesses are feeling. And it's sometimes quite easy to think about businesses and go, oh, yes, it's, it's a shop. But I think we all know that that's, that's not the extent of it. These are people in our community. These are families, parents, people who volunteer, people who have their day-to-day -day lives, and they are really struggling. And so if this does anything, it sends a signal to them that we're listening. Will it help? I think is an interesting question to be asking. Maybe. I think that when I consider my daily habits, I know that when I do the preschool run, <clears throat> I like to do an outing afterwards. I like to go out and do something with my children. And the one hour limit on parking seems so insignificant and paying $2 seems so insignificant. But I think for many families, it's easier to just nip out to Richmond where you don't have to think about it than to come into Nelson and worry that one little hiccup, one disaster, one child running off and you having to chase after them adds all that extra stress. So I think that this will influence the decisions of people in our city. And I think it raises another point, and that's that while we might have our aspirations around parking, they need to align with the other cities and centres in our region. And I think that that's a conversation that's worth having. I don't think that this is a debate about whether we're supportive of cars uh, or not cars. I think that modal shift is about adding options to people. And that's exactly what we're doing through our public transport rollout, through our cycleway connections. And I think that those initiatives are fantastic and should be supported. But I think we all agree that empty car parks are a waste of space. So whether it's an initiative like this, where we open them up and make them more available, control that supply and demand of those car parks, or whether we look at other initiatives, such as the Saturday market, which uses car parks, but it draws people into the city, we should be considering those things too. And that's why I'm so pleased that Rohan brought the initiative uh, for the $20,000 City Winter Activation Fund, because I think that brings about another angle to utilise these car parks, which in summer are well utilised. And there's a debate around whether we need to add more or take away car parks. That's a separate debate as well, because in the winter, whatever we have, it, it mostly sits empty. I think council has its own work streams as well around drawing people to consider living in the city centre, around community hubs and city centre investment, which we need to give good consideration, especially as we head into the long-term plan. But we also need to be listening to our businesses. And I think that's what this does today. Um, I think that's what the proposed fund does. And I think that that is community-led development to its core. So I'm really supportive of this. Thanks, Councillor Hodgson. Uh, Councillor Rainey. Uh, thanks, Ben. First, uh, firstly, um, 
Uh, I'd like to uh, signal potentially I have a conflict of interest if three goes through in that I own a company that potentially could um, be employed to put in place events in the CBD as it has done previously. So I would ask that you um, put these motions one by one separately so that I can withdraw from that one if I need to. I think the conflict of interest that you note um, is speculative in the sense that you might, right? Um, but I think it is a credit to you, Pete, that's put it on the table. Um, frankly, as mayor, if your company has got an idea about how we could do something exciting in the city to inject some life over the next four months, I, as mayor, would love to see it. Uh, but I would like the conflict of interest that Councillor Rainey to be recorded in the minutes, and it is my intention to put item three separately so Pete is able to abstain on that item. Thanks for that. So um, I'd like to comment on two things. Um, firstly, in regards to um, item six regarding the retail strategy, and, and I've just written a few notes, so I'm just kind of read from them because um, it's how I structured my thinking. You know, um, I'm, it's very clear in my mind that we need innovative solutions um, to support the commercial success and the increased vibrancy of, of our CBD. And that's why I put through this idea of, of commissioning and um, potentially implementing um, a retail strategy. And I do acknowledge, uh, me and Nick, your comments about strategies. I completely agree, you know, and it's quite refreshing to um, be sitting on um, the task force in regards to the art strategy, given that the strategy is relatively recent and we kind of want to get on, you know, there's clear messages we want to get on with implementing it. I have called for a retail strategy around this table for over a decade. <laughs> no, actually, probably longer than that. Time and time again, let's get a retail strategy. Look what they did in Newcastle. Look what they did in other centres around New Zealand where they've developed a strategy. Well, it's obviously fallen on deaf ears because nothing's happened. So some of the ideas that I want to quickly talk about, lean on strategy ideas developed by First Retail, which is a company that we are already working with in relationship or in relation to the implementation of Te Ara Whakatū. The city needs solutions that will have the potential to increase commercial collaboration, help to inform investment decisions and create collective offers and experiences that compel people to come to our CBD and add to a central city that in many ways is already, in my mind, heading towards being an even more vibrant hub for the top of the south. This could include an urban centre retail strategy, an evening and night economy strategy with particular reference to our hospitality sector, Interesting, a comment that I heard on, at a meeting on Tuesday from the hospitality sector is we are being slammed at the moment. We are being slammed. I think um, Deputy Mayor was at that same meeting where we heard that comment. It's an interesting to hear that coming out of the kind of conversations we've been having today. We need to do really good work on precinct, cluster strategies, proper stakeholder engagement, find out, do some real research on what people think and their spending um, habits. Suggestions of ways that council could implement programs that would support economic recovery alongside infrastructure improvement and development, not just in Bridge Street, but right across the whole of the CBD. And my real fear is Tara or Whakatū will be an absolutely magnificent project and people in Hardy Street will go, oh, what about us? Now, we've heard that before when there was some criticism of other projects that council were putting up, dare I say it, like Church Street, where other people were saying, well, what about us? So we have to be mindful of that. And if there's any way we could manipulate, it's not the right word, but if there's any way that we could adjust the funding streams in Tara Whakatū to maybe have a wider gaze on the CBD, let's try and look at that. The strategy would also be tasked with commenting and developing ideas in regards to the value that events, both daytime and evening, create in Nelson City, especially in the winter months. Rather than cutting events, we should seek real evidence and examples of how further investment in events could really stimulate our CBD. So I do... I do acknowledge and I, um, uh, I applaud the Mayor for altering that to point it towards the long-term plan. It's absolutely the, the right idea, and I was going to say that it needs to be the place where we consider this. And finally, on, just on the retail strategy, as I challenge everybody around the table, if not, why not? 
if why why wouldn't we want to put in place a retail strategy? It's it's obvious it is, and if not now, then when? And I'd, that's the only other thing is I would certainly hope it doesn't drag on. Now, I just want to say something really quickly in regards to decision making and being nimble, responsive, and agile as a council. As chair of the city centre working group in the last term. I was really thrilled when staff brought $900,000 worth of government funding to the table to put in place some trials of some ways that we could adjust the street language of our CBD. It was a really fantastic piece of work put up um, and completely shot down by many in our CBD to the point where I was rolled as chair of that committee. Now, what is the initiative going to be that's going to get support from our CBD sector? Because, indeed, that was just a trial. It was just a trial. And it could have been outrageously successful or it could have been a complete flop. We won't know because we didn't get there. What did come out of it, and I, I acknowledge the hard work of Councillor Courtney, what did come out of it is Te Ara And... We still don't yet really know what the reaction from our retail sector is going to be from the implementation of Tower of Fakatu. I certainly hope it gets a smooth ride. So when council is accused of being unresponsive or not agile or not nimble, I disagree. We have come up with ideas. We put it, and it can't be that the only response is, no, we don't want to do that. We just want to give free parking. I, I absolutely think we've got to be able to be able to see beyond that parking issue. And I reiterate and support what others have already said around the table and look at some bigger picture things. There may be some pain and you cannot make an omelette without breaking some eggs. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Rani. I'm going to take Councillor Stellard, then Councillor Brand. Thanks, Medic. Um, firstly, and thank you, Stephen Rainbow, for putting this report together so quickly and reducing the burden on other hardworking staff. And it's already been successful in that it has stimulated other ideas and engagement, so that's really fantastic. And I do agree we should be doing all we can to support, you know, the central city businesses. I am a little uncomfortable with any suggestion that if we don't support free parking, we are therefore not listening or not engaging or not supporting because we do have a responsibility to consider all implications or consequences of a proposal that's before us. And I, I, th I think we can do better. I think we have done better with um, item three up there. Um, we have discussed that there's no indication that the free parking will have a material benefit, and it, but, but that it is sending a signal and a message. And that, that is a good thing. It does send other messages as well, and that it will encourage people to drive when we're trying to send other messages and other signals other times, please take the bus or cycle. More worryingly for me, it will encourage people to pick up their kids from school in a car. When again, we're trying to encourage people to use active transport, especially, um, especially kids. And it does undermine our position on emissions reductions and the e-bus rollout, however we couch it. It's, it's contrary to that. Um, I'm glad to see Councillor Rainey suggest we do take a strategic approach to this, a longer-term approach, because I do believe a key success longer-term is having more people living in the inner city, having more people-friendly spaces like we have in Upper Trafalgar Street. And if you think of arguably the most successful weekly period in Nelson, it's Saturday morning, we have a big people-friendly space with the market. And that's just that's just a wonder. It's, 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 I think that's where we should look for um, inspiration and also civic investment, greater civic investment over the longer term. So in terms of what's before us, I do support items one to four and six. I think they're meaningful. They do achieve the desired outcomes of the report, which is sending a strong message, being supportive and hopefully increasing, you know, customers and, and the well-being of our retailers in the inner city. I don't support Item five, I think stacking up it up now against these amendments, it is insignificant and it is problematic to me, and it's inconsistent with our other policies and objectives and strategies. So I, I think, well, I would ask ideally if we did consider item five separately when it comes to voting, because I would support um, item three as the main one. 
uh, but I would not support item five. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Stella. Councillor Brand. Uh, thank you, through the mayor. Um, Central City activation has been talked about for many, many times. In fact, we spent a whole term last training talking about Central City activation. We put together steps to work with, listen to and engage with the business community as well as the other users within our Central City. A lot of good work came out of that. But now we need to be responsive. We need to take action. We have to... Um, in the big scheme of things, number five isn't that big in the scheme. Over the winter months, it's just a minor action, but it shows the community that we want to work together. It is the bridge to bring the parties together to have the conversation to come up with and co-create the future of a vibrant central city. And it can be built upon over the years to come. But we need to actually have that Olive Branch and that bridge to continue to build the conversation to take it to implementation and into action. The period um, that has happened, COVID was a great impact on our central city businesses as well as other areas. But I like to say well done to those businesses who were nimble and able to survive that period of hardship, while others had to make the hard call and the the heartbreaking moment to withdraw their business from our central city. And we have to repair and build back, and we have to come back. We've heard others talk about bringing people to live in the central city, which is great because it will stir the activation, but you need something in the central city for them to activate. <clears throat> The business group and other communities in those other 200 group meetings that happened last term with the Central City Working Group um, accumulated a wealth of initiatives and activation strategies, not only for summer but also for winter, but it needs the money and I feel that this um, establishment for this Activation. While it is small, it starts the stepping stone to build upon that so that those initiatives and activations can be implemented because nothing comes with a free lunch, although we would like one. <laughs> but sometimes we also need to get out of the way and embrace the action that's needed to give the space for the future sustainability to develop and grow, which is what six will do. But we need to start somewhere. And while this is a small little goldfish in the pond, by talking about the exemption of the parking for this limited period of time, it gives the space for that to develop. So I will support what is up there, but I feel we need to look at this again in the bigger strategy, ensure that we continue to work together and communicate and engage with our central city um, businesses and other users to ensure that we have the most vibrant, excellent Nelson City Central that we can have. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Brand. Councillor Anderson. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I agree with everything in red. I, um, I also agree with um, Councillor Courtney's um, little little chat, and I'm, I don't think five's a good idea. Um, however, I do believe in community consultation and um, and people turning up and giving the process mana. I. Uh, I'd say I, I, I will be supporting uh, five. Thanks, Councillor Anderson. Uh, Councillor Bench. Thank you, Mayor Nick. Um, I've been a small central city business owner for, I was just trying to work it out, it's at least 19 years, it might be 20. Um, my wife and I's present business during COVID went to zero for a long time. It is now 50% of pre-COVID. Um, my children's business got closed during COVID, whereas the supermarkets were allowed to sell vegetables they were deemed to risk. Um, it nearly destroyed them. The reason, if my oldest daughter can't beat the reason out of someone, I don't know how you get the reason out of someone. She's, just, she's pretty tenacious, but there you go. Um, 
there were other things that were a great boost to the city, and one was Kaikoura being closed, and that had a huge effect on the city. And so, yes, we did have a closure down here, which our mayor and others worked very hard on and got it open again, but Kaikoura was a huge boost to the city. So we shouldn't forget that. Um, I'm not against doing this sort of thing, but you, you need to be able to measure it because if you can't measure it, you don't know whether it worked. And personally, and, and Nick said 200,000 for a study, which, uh, yeah, took my breath away for a bit. I, I was thinking if we do a study, there's the 25,000 gone. But uh, 200,000, I, I feel that sitting around this table and sitting around the businessmen's table, there must be a lot of smart people. And um, I don't know whether this number five is the best thing we can come up with, but I have, you know, it's going to cost 2000 to change the labelling on the information. I presume it's going to cost 2000 to change it back again. Um, but <clears throat> I'm quite happy to spend money on things like that if you can measure them, because if you can measure them, you say that really worked, we could do it again or we could do a little bit more, or whatever it is. The best in the world is McDonald's, and I always study what they do. And um, if you go to McDonald's regularly on a morning for breakfast, they used to give you a free hamburger, but you couldn't get it in the morning. So they identified people's habits, and then they gave them something free to come at a different time to try and add to the habit at a different time of the day or on a different day. Sometimes the ticket was for a Wednesday. Yeah. It wasn't me buying them, by the way, even though I might look like that. <laughs> but I've always studied what they do because they are one of the best in the world. I mean, 200000 for a study, what about 200000 worth of free bus tickets that, you, that the shopping centre could give away to customers that bought something? Um, and, and maybe they could be for a specific day or whatever, but there's there's a, a lot of things that free free childcare. But if you can measure it, then you can decide whether it's a, a good thing to do and come back and do it rather than pay someone $200,000 for no benefit for one single businessman in the city centre. And I don't believe that this group or this group here couldn't come up with with better ideas than that. So I'll support this, but I think there needs to be an objective way to measure it. And I think the business community that want this, um, and I'd like to have said this when they were here, but um, they need to come up with some way of possibly measuring the effect that this has. We can count the cars possibly in the, in the car park and see whether they fill up. Um, when we get our new buses, we can see whether people are gonna travel more on them because they're electric. Um, but we can count the people in the buses, so we, we actually know. But I think that what we do needs to be measurable. Thanks, Councillor Benj. Any other councillors? Uh, Councillor Pakibay. In that way, I'll turn my mic on. I'll drop it. <laughs> yeah, that works. Come on. Um, so, again, uh, we've, uh, we've encountered this a couple of times. Um, the, uh, there's a disproportionate amount of time and resources that have been poured into this. Uh, I think what it indicates is, you know, there's a lot of recreational outrage going on here, it's like dog registrations, or getting upset about stuff that's it's actually such a tiny thing, forgetting the point, which is really Pete's point, it's number six. That's what we should be focusing on. This is a little bit of a dig us out of the hole sort of a, a thing, but again, if it's not being attended to year after year after year, we're going to find ourselves in the same situation. So, um, again, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a storm in a teacup. Um, these are these are a distraction, and, and for us to get so emotionally involved and invest so much time and resources into this, um, when we potentially think it may not work, on top of it, um, I think is a uh, is a sort of a, is a false path. We're not going to find anything at the end of it. So 
Number six, I'm, I'm definitely in support of. The other ones, I think that because there's a, a 20,000, the, the amount is quite arbitrary. I think it needs to be more than that. I don't know if it's, again, it's that diminishing returns thing of where that $20,000 is actually just, we're just trying to stick jelly to the wall. It's not quite going to get us what, what we need. So, um, and I agree with everyone else. There you go. Come on. Come on. Deputy Mayor. Oh, yeah. Look, I mean, I was just sitting there going, I've spent another hour and a half of my life talking about uh, parking in the city centre. Um, I think that must take it up to about 80 hours. Uh, I feel the need to clarify. Um, I think I've been given too much credit for my role in this. Uh, I did the forum where the idea came from. Um, it was then tested with councillors and they said they'd like to look at it. And uh, Stephen wrote up a report. Um, please, I, I can't take undue credit for, for anything here. But what I look at in the conversations I've had um, is that proactive forward-looking change is what we need in our city centre. Um, you know, for me, it's my backyard. It's my third space. It's the place where I go to work, go home to, um, and my kitchen as well, uh, as well as what clothes me and everything in between. Um, and the activation of our city centre is absolutely crucial through the winter months, not just for retail, not just for hospitality, but for our community. Um, connection is key anytime, but also for our art sector, for our community sectors, for our volunteer sectors. This is a hub that does not just serve to be a central business district. There's a reason we call it the city centre because it is the centre of so much activity for our community, and I think we need to recognise that, and that in supporting that activation, we support business, but we also support that wider picture. And this fits into, and I'm speaking here to the City Centre Winter Activation Fund, this sits in a wider program of work of pre-existing winter events that are already scheduled, of projects developed and to be delivered by our local community that are already planned. This is just about giving it an additional kick and what that will look like we'll still need to see and i think that's a good thing is actually we need to be able to be on the ground listening and seeing where those areas are that we can support and when i reflect on the long-term picture which i've waxed lyrical on and it's all on the record many times so i'll keep this bit short is the realities have changed and are continuing to change. The driving forces of spending are changing. Our understanding of what city centres mean to our population and to our community is changing. The purpose that they are there is changing. We know that no longer is a just retail offerings enough. We need to be tying that with our hospitality offerings, with our community space offerings, with our public realm offerings. We know that if we want to keep our city centre thriving into the future, significant change is needed because a failure to change has seen us decline over the past two decades. Um, and I think that that's a reality that I'm hearing reflected back from businesses at the City Centre Business Forum. The question is no longer what change will we see, it's when are we going to see it? When is this council going to deliver on what we've talked about for years and years and years? And I think that's got to be core in our thinking. I think the retail strategy sits as part of that, but we also already have a significant body of work um, right there. And I'll be really blunt. The unspoken part of that is that I don't think parking is the problem in our city centre. I think it's that it is reflective of an era of cities that is passing. And I think particularly COVID highlighted that, where people want to be able to go, not just to spend money, but to connect, to spend time in a place that has amenity value and has things that make them want to hang around. Um, and I think that that needs to be a, a clear message. Um, and it won't be one that everyone agrees with. Uh, and I think that's important why we continue doing the work that we do with 
evidence-backed policy to shape what that future looks like. So we're not just going in with reckons and hot takes on each of these issues. Um, and so I'm going to support all of the recommendations there, but I think we need to be incredibly clear that this is a short-term sugar hit when what we need is structural shifts and investment from our council alongside our business and community to reshape a city centre that we can all be proud of because that is the thing that breaks my heart more than anything is talking to people who say we're proud of the businesses here, we're proud of our boutiques, we're proud of our hospitality offering, but we are not proud of our city centre. And that's something that we have to change. Thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor. Just exercising uh, right of reply. The first thing is I actually think it's been really valuable and important for us to be as a council debating issues that are relevant for our community. And I think all of the contributions, both in the questions and the debate on this issue, have actually been important because in this council chamber, we should be debating the issues that are affecting our community. And when you've got a significant number of our retailers in our CBD saying they are facing the toughest times in more than a decade, it's appropriate that that discussion is occurring in this chamber. There will always be a frustration that council is a bit player. And whether it be in terms of the long or the short-term strategy, we have a relatively number of limited levers that we can pull. And sometimes that can bring a cynical view that says actually we're so small, whether it be in the setting of the rates or with the relatively limited levers that we have through planning, uh, through our um, parking and other policies to influence things that we should do nothing. Uh, my view uh, is that, no, that's a negative perspective and that wherever possible we should pull those levers that we do have available to us uh, that can make a positive difference. I also think this discussion has helped us shape some views of which the, both the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Rani and others have spoken to about the need for the longer term view. And I actually think that's been a helpful discussion as we start getting into the long term plan and deciding what goes there. In respect of the issue of parking, I do think we need to have a sense of realism, particularly in the short term. If we look at the most recent census data, 80% of people's journeys in the city are by car, 1% by bus, 5% by biking. If you're serious about supporting hospitality, retail and those things, you need to recognise that the majority of people are making the choice, for whatever reason, to travel by car, and that while we should be supportive of improving transport choices, if we are not prepared to acknowledge that a good number of the retail activity comes off the back of people travelling in a vehicle, uh, then in my view, we're being naive about what actually drives the turnover and the business uh, in the city. My last point is that I think this is about doing a whole lot of bits of stuff. I'm very proud and there's a huge amount of work that's going into the new bus service. I think the initiative that the Deputy Mayor has brought to the table with this activation fund is a good and complementary thing. I think the work that Uniquely Nelson is doing with a major winter uh, campaign for retail is part of the picture that is required. And I think what we are doing here with parking is another small but helpful bit uh, to the overall equation. The last bit I'd want to say is that, Pete, I uh, appreciate your advice and really keen to understand the cogent argument you put forward about a longer-term retail strategy. But I also, in reflecting on your points about where the previous council was not able to get there, was in, in terms of not taking the business community with us. And the last point I'd want to make on this is this council made a decision to establish a central city business forum because we wanted a better relationship between the council and the business forum. And I think in the early period of this council, when they've come to with us with a request at very short notice and being able to respond positively, improves the relationship between the council and the businesses. And I think that's gonna be really important in these tough times and throws symbolically us actually doing some things that they have asked for in my view, sets the foundations for some of the bigger challenges that Council has raised in their contributions on this debate. It's now my intention to put the resolution, just so councillors are aware, I'm going to put each individual resolution by voices. In the event that I cannot establish a majority, it is my right to be able to call a personal vote, but that will only be for the purposes where it's not clear. If any member would like an individual vote on any item, they have the right to request it.
I put resolution number one that we received the report. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Carried. I put the second report that notes the economic challenges facing our retailers. Uh, uh, resolution number two. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. I put resolution number three, and I would note that Councillor Pete Rainey has uh, opted to abstain and so will not be voting, uh, given a potential for a future conflict of interest. I put resolution number three. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. That is carried. I put uh, resolution number four. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. That is carried. Resolution number five. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, say no. Aye. I am I going to. I, I, I think I need to put the. Uh, uh, we just have a quick show of hands. Those in favour, please say aye. I raise a hand. Uh, those against. I'm going to declare it carried. A member may call for a personal vote to be recorded if they wish. No, the resolution is carried uh, on uh, the, the clarification. The last item, number six, can I put that on to the to the council? Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those the contrary, say no. That is carried. Thank you for your indulgence. I know we've taken some time on that. I'd like to ask Councillor Skinner to conclude the council meeting uh, with a closing character or prayer at his choice. I just give a very brief thank you. Thank you very much. And um, just a, a thank you, Lord, and thank you to the community for enabling this process to take place. And once again, uh, the integrity of this table in front of you. Thank you. Cheers. I mean, meeting has concluded. The workshop that is planned on the tra transport activation management plan is in here or in room. Uh, and I'm going to call that to order at 11.30. Again, thanks for your help this morning.